Time for more Combat Radio. This one's going to feature Oscar-nominated production designer Bill Sandell, who worked on Hocus Pocus, Robocop, Total Recall, Master and Commander, Deep Blue Sea, everybody's favorite, and a few other classics. This is going to be really cool because it's going to be from his house slash art studio where he's going to show us some wizardry and some props from the actual film Hocus Pocus and some other things. Before we get to that, though, just a quick FYI, we've got... Uh, to help with social services, we got an auction going on Charity Buzz. Features all kinds of autographed guitars, special interactive experiences, Zoom meetings with producers and directors from this show, a guitar lesson from Alex Grassi of Quiet Riot, a drum lesson from Danny Serafin of Chicago, and some other things on Charity Buzz. Go to the Combat Radio Twitter or the Brigade Radio 1 Twitter or Facebook page pages to get involved. There's going to be some more stuff going up in a couple of weeks, so it's going to continue to be awesome. And you can help us help social services and help us make the world a better place. Also, through our Patreon, Patreon slash Brigade Radio 1, we're also reconfiguring and re-engineering that to help with our work for social services. So there's going to be a lot of rewards, a lot of special content, a lot of giveaways there for like 3 bucks or 5 bucks a month. Go to Patreon slash Brigade Radio 1, get involved. And also this bit of fun... Brigade Radio 1 slash Combat Radio Year 1 Live at the Canyon. The book available at Amazon, which is one year's worth of crazy backstage broadcasts. Featuring everyone from like Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, John Anderson of Yes, Nancy Wilson of Heart, The Temptations, Grammy winner Pancho Sanchez, Stephen Van Zant, the broadcast that Bruce Springsteen, Bushwhacked us on, Los Lonely Boys, Lots of pictures, backstage stories, and other bits of trivia and fun for you on Amazon. So, let's start the show. Be right back with Bill Sandell. It's a spell book from Hocus Pocus. There's a crew gift from Hocus Pocus. Spell and some sage in there. I make witches brooms. That's one of them there. Black flame candle. Some more spell books here. This has some great ones in it. Some scrolls that each have spells. Black cat hair. More sage bones. I have some monkey's paws in my apothecary. Dried pixie wings. Brain fluid, that's good for some things. Monkey bones, handy, walking death. Bats, of course, you need a lot of bats. Mandrake root, it's really good. Hey everyone, well listen, if you know anything about Combat Radio, you know we love this guy. He's an Oscar-nominated production designer and a BAFTA award winner who worked on everything from Hocus Pocus to Total Recall. He's also a big hero with our work for social services. And right now, at, on Charity Buzz, if you go to the Combat Radio Twitter or the Brigade Radio 1 Twitter or Facebook pages, you can win a chance to have a Zoom meeting with this guy and score some Hocus Pocus production art and help us help social services in the process. So some fun things on the horizon, but best of all, we got a chance to talk to everybody's favorite production designer, Bill Sandell. Bill, how are you? I'm pretty good, Ethan. Good to talk to you. <laughs> nice to talk to you. I see you're in the lab there. Most people probably can imagine, but I've actually witnessed what is the bat cave of Bill Sandell's life. Uh, Hocus pocus props, all kinds of effects, a, a, like a witch's apothecary, all the stuff you'd expect to to see in a in a studio owned by a guy like that. How are you, Bill? I'm good. I'm I'm, I'm here uh, hunkering down in my studio in L.A. at the brewery. So uh, yeah, my my studio is like a Willy Wonka shop meets a, a UFO landing site. Yeah, <laughs> the witch's lair. So. Um, Anyway, I'm really glad to help you with this, uh, you know, with your uh, fundraising for your charities. You know, I'm a big fan about that, with that, and uh, anything I can do, you know, I want to get on it well, with you. 
You've always been a generous and special guy with that stuff. You've been on the ground with us when we've done Christmas for the Children of Social Services. Right now we're doing a food drive with the Mongols and some other people. So we just do what we can. But you've never you've never shy, shied away from the action, buddy. You're always willing to hero up and get involved. And we love you for that. What I love even more is the imagination, creativity you bring to everything we do. Like a true artist and a production designer, you're bombarding us right now with visual epicness. You've got like the Hocus Pocus magic book and a bunch of other... What's on your table there? No, it's just... I, I have so much witch stuff here, and, and like you say, I have a pretty big uh, witch's cabinet and a big, big apothecary. It's just some stuff from my, uh, that part of my life. This is, this is a stand-in book from uh, Hocus Pocus, one of the only, uh, I think it's only one of the three that survived. One's down in Florida, I think, at Disney World. So one's at so, Disney uh, World, and one is in your art studio. How classic is that? Yeah, the kids kind of get it. When we have our art walk every year, people go back to my library. I have a pretty extensive stack, like a real library back in another part of my studio. And uh, people are rifling through things, and they find this book, and they're like, what? I can't tell you how many people have asked to have their picture taken with it. So that's kind of pleasing to me. I saved a lot of focus focus drawings from uh, the show. A lot of shows, I don't save stuff, but I saved a lot of focus focus stuff because it was a very special uh film to me and, and actually all of us have worked on it we're all big halloween fans i'm, I'm flying my midsummer scream shirt right now so nice. well you know we had talked about how you set up part of the town uh for halloween that's actually in whittier i mean sh- some of the films shot in salem and we'll get to that in a minute but you set up in whittier during christmas and you brought down all the notorious christmas decorations that people love to go to this neighborhood to see and you replaced it with Halloween and everyone was pissed off. It's really in the old town in Whittier around their town square. It's quite quite a beautiful area there. All uh, turn of the century Victorian homes and they were all, people come from miles around to look at the Christmas lights. Mm-hmm. But we were shooting in late November when all the Christmas lights were up that early and, uh, but I had to go door to door and ask them if we could take them down, film a movie and put up orange lights and pumpkins and trick or treat stuff. So, uh, that caused, uh, I remember people going crazy in town when they drive out of one neighborhood and it was Halloween in another neighborhood and the little trick-or-treaters, hundreds were running around. So that was kind of fun. Well, I think uh, the fans of Hocus Pocus are pretty much indebted to people like you who've kept the mystique of the movie alive. Do you have a couple of production stories that come to mind when you think of that movie, some behind-the-scenes stuff that maybe most people haven't heard before a lot of stuff on the internet which is all you know all true it i guess i just remember it as uh, uh, being a very happy set i mean it was halloween every day we built this huge uh, forest and graveyard and the, and the witch's home in uh you know on the big stage at disney so it's really you know for halloween buffs like me and it's my favorite holiday uh it was just terrific to go to Hall- have Halloween every day. It really was Halloween every day. And then, you know, of course, we went to uh, Salem for a couple of weeks to film. And uh, we got there uh, at Halloween. I was in Salem for Halloween. What a dream that was, 25 years ago. And it was right on the about the t- uh, 300th anniversary of this, uh, you know, this horrible event of, you know, the the, uh, the purge there in town and, you know, and everybody's seen the Crucible to play, so I'm sure they understand what happened. So it was quite a quite a big deal. We had so much fun in Salem. Oh, my God. For those of us who haven't experienced it, Halloween in Salem. I love Salem, by the way. As it's pretty well known, I had to go back for a military funeral with my family, and Bill Sandell here gave me all the highlights of Salem and all the locations for Hocus Pocus and where to go. And that was a huge, huge break for us. But for those people who don't know, like, how would you describe Salem at Halloween? It's, it's a dream place to be. And it's not as crowded as, it wasn't as crowded as, as it is now. I mean, our picture helped do that uh-huh. uh, to, some, to some degree. But, uh, you know, every, every shop has a Halloween show in it. Every empty building is a spooky Halloween thing, all the graveyards and all the homes are decorated, those beautiful homes in Salem and up in Marblehead. 
I mean, everybody has corn stalks and pumpkins and, you know, it, it, they're into it, you know, and uh, just to be there was unbelievable. I mean, the town hall and uh, up at every house, every place we went, the uh, old pioneer town where we shot and uh, uh, it's just great. It was great. Yeah, it's a beautiful place, man. And a lot of fun, fun little shops and museums and, you know. You know, I love that, uh, I love that our film, that uh, we were all loved making this film. Uh, I just love that it's become a piece of Salem. You know, that um, in that wonderful pageant of history in that town, where I was thinking about the other day, we're this little teeny piece, but we are a piece of this whole 400 year history of Salem, Hocus Pocus. I mean, there are Hocus Pocus tours. They go to all the, that's like 10 different locations. Uh, we're a part of that. And I just love that we left that uh, and everybody gets a kick out of that. So, so walk me through your laboratory there, Dr. Uh, Frankenstein. What do you got on your table there besides the well, book? Well, I, you know, I wanted to, people, this is a wonderful charity you raise money for, Combat Radio, Brigade Radio, and uh, I love your, I lo well, you fundraise all year and you go to charities all year, but the big, the big thing for me is the Christmas thing that I've been helping with the last year. I mean, I know you have, Giacomo Giazza, the wonderful illustrator, um, did great drawings, and I saved a lot of these drawings. Eventually, we decided to print them up. Actually, uh, Sarah Rose at the Sugarman Gallery has sort of a semi-permanent collection of Focus Focus stuff, and she and I came up with this plan to, and we talked to Giacomo about it, he was good, good with it, to print up his drawings, so he signed them all. So, you know, we've got, you have a lot of these drawings for your fundraising that Giacomo yes. and I don't need. So we've got these wonderful drawings that I think, you know, he, Sarah Rose sells a lot at the Sugarman Gallery, and uh, I know you've got, you know, some that you could contribute. I mean, I've got, you know, just some wonderful stuff here. Like if somebody wants to do a, do this zoom with me, I've got a books and books loads of, uh, you know, construction photos when we're building the house out in, uh, on Disney on their big stage and, uh, you know, some behind the scenes, uh, you know, set makeup tests, you know, <laughs> I noticed in our, in some of my books here and, you know, I've got some fun stuff. If people, you know, I know people are interested in Hocus Pocus. I'm on a couple of Halloween sites and uh, uh, Hocus Pocus sites. And uh, I'm, I've always thought it was terrific. And everybody loves the film so much. So I'm certainly willing to talk about it with anybody that wants to donate to your charity event. Because I, I, I see every dollar that you raise. I see where it goes, Ethan. I've mentioned this to you before. It's not a... Yeah. It's a, it's a charity that I really can see it with my hand. I'm not sending my money away. I see it with my own eyes uh, when the kids come out for Christmas and Santa comes and the Disney characters come and the, all the cosplay players come and uh, uh, R2-D2 comes and everybody comes to support you. You have a big volunteer group out there. and I know you fundraise all year long. And uh, I just think the world of what you and your family, Sean and uh, Loda, have done, you know, to raise money for this. So. I can contribute. If I can talk to somebody that uh, wants to contribute. I'm I'm happy to talk all all day for them. So. Well, we love you for that. And like I said, you've been on the ground with our charity work. And anyone who anyone can volunteer with us at Christmas or when we adopt a shelter. And anyone can donate and be a part of the event to actually see how their money is applied. It's 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 had its moments, man. It's it's emotionally kind of breaking for me in in a lot of ways but i'm always glad we did it despite whatever sort of pain i go through like not to not to turn the interview about this it's easy to go down the rabbit hole but i think i said to you last time we talked that there was a one of the buses we rent buses to bring the families in from social services and one of them was late coming back and the 50 people it's amazing yeah hundreds of kids what like the 50 families that were supposed to get on this last bus were waiting in the rain. And I just remember it was raining and the event was over and they were just waiting. And I heard a little boy, maybe seven or eight, just go, you know, but mommy, I don't want to go. And I just, I, it just crushed me to hear it. You know, it was just the idea that 
he's probably returning to an overpass or a cardboard box and you know the magic ends and it was just destroyed me that one comment that day you, you the the uh, the charity event the christmas with santa charity event that you do i mean they, by the way they get to meet santa and you've got the all the, he is santa he is santa claus yes believable you get presents you get a really nice present you get all this meal that salt creek grill puts on for them out there in uh, saugus new hall area and uh I mean, it's very impressive to me. And then to see the families come in and, uh, uh, and, you know, all the, and they get to meet Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and they get to meet all their heroes from all, you know, you, you know, all these actors and producers and directors come out to help you and they get to meet all the voiceover artists. You have a lot of voiceover artists that come out to do all the cartoon voices that they've heard on the, on TV. Right. Uh, it's a pretty impressive little grassroots kind of thing you've done here, you and your family. I mean, I'm, I'm always impressed. Well, it started with a dream of just being kind from my daughter when she was in the third grade. And here we are 10 years later, still trying to bring what magic we can. One of my favorite moments is when you started taking on the production design responsibilities of the, of the event. And I made a phone call to Disney and I said, who does your snow for the Haunted Mansion's Jack Skellington? And they say amalgamated incorporated or somebody in illinois and i ordered all these boxes of snow which by the way i found a few after our last event uh and i gave it to you and you were like working with this snow on stage and lighting these trees and i'm looking at the trees and i'm like you're making it this beautiful colorful set and uh i go uh why don't you just use all white lights it's so colorful and you go which one of us has the bafta award exactly i took down the colored light I took him down. Uh, no, you didn't. You were right. And I should have, I, you know, I know better. I should have just let it go. It's just, I, you know, I don't know why I even said it, but it was so funny because I was. You're the man of ceremonies and you have enough on your shoulders. If you want white lights, Ethan, I want to give you some white lights. <laughs> it was just fantastic. I mean, the response was so genuine and so correct. It's like, which one of us has the BAFTA? Which one of us has been nominated for the Oscar? That's right. It's me. Where did they pull that chestnut out? But at that moment, you deserved that. Yeah. I, My son Hunter, Hunter's working with us now the last couple of years. So that, love that's it. Amazing. And he, he will never miss another one, Ethan. He, he, like everybody else, once you go, I get so much more out of this event than I could ever, ever do. Yeah, so me too. It's really something to watch it come together. It really is magical. It is magical. That afternoon, to see the buses arriving, and you got the motorcycle gangs from two or three of these big tough guys, and they got their armloads of presents, and they're walking over, and Santa arrives in the fire department, and you got the fire department handing. I mean, it's really turned into this amazing event. Well, it's it it's a success because of the magic of people like you and what you bring to it. Whether it's you or the Mongols or whatever, whoever get the Star Wars characters. Everyone adds to the experience for these young people. And, you know, I'm waiting for the day when, and something similar to this has happened, but I'm waiting for the day when a, 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 someone comes back a li, who was a little kid once upon a time who held on, made something from himself and comes back and shows all of us, you know, hey, yeah. This is, this is a moment particularly when you're a child, to see them walking over and every, every child gets a little tiny Christmas tree about three or four feet tall for them. And to see them walking away with a present under their arm, a unbelievable meal, as much as you want to eat in this wonderful restaurant, the Salt Creek Grill out there. And uh, I mean, how could they not remember this moment? I mean, they're going, this might be the, the, the biggest Christmas moment of December for them. If they're all heading back to shelters and worse, in shelters um it's really something that your social services round up all these people that aren't in you know they, it's quite quite a thing you're doing here well we've got a zoom meeting up for auction with you and maybe we'll do a few more things but what do we have walk the viewers through what's on your table is that like what with in addition to the hocus pocus book what are some of these other i've made i've made a number of witches brooms and uh I've got spell books and uh, 
little mugwort and angel dust and angel wings and uh, mushrooms and uh, can you hold some of that in front of the camera that got a wand that I made that's pretty special to me and uh, you know a black flame candle and some feathers I I'm looking at my witch's cabinet which is pretty good over there but these are just little things I thought I'd set up the table with just to capture flavor of Halloween it's fun to set up do a little set dressing here anyway well you know <laughs> You know, with the COVID-19, uh, you know, some of my neighbors put their Christmas lights up, you know, for morale. And I don't have Christmas lights, but I'm like, oh, we could put our Halloween decorations up. We could put in our cemetery and our fog and our like swamp lights. And But then I realized putting in headstones is not the right message during a pandemic. Kind of the wrong, maybe ixnay on the on the tombstone, eh? Yeah. Right, but the 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 concept of Halloween is always a good one in my house. Anytime you can have some Halloween men... In fact, I was watching Halloween movies the other day. Yeah, yeah. Well, I kind of live it all year long. I, I'm always looking for spooky things. Let's take a look at these props. Hold a couple of things up. We see the rich, witch's broom. You showed us the wand in the book. Uh, well, I've got scrolls with magical incantations. Of course, I've got my sage. I have a lot of bones here. Actually, behind me, I've got a lot of stuff here from uh i collect i collect some pieces from ave rose the uh the wonderful artist and uh i've had two-headed chickens and severed heads and crystal balls and um uh, you know it's all stuff that gets me through the day <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a very invigorating environment here you know at the brewery well we uh we have a lot of love for you bill we love everything about you we love the artwork Production design, man. It's always fun to talk to you. That is by far the coolest Zoom set we've ever done a broadcast from. So you win. I want to make it kind of fun here since we're always just sort of talking. At, the, at Universal, we're always over there talking or at your uh, at your uh, radio station studios. But uh, I want to make it kind of fun. Right. It's funny because the uh, the story at Universal between the two of us is when the trams would get ambushed by a Phantom of the Opera-like character at night that would pop out, known as the Phantom Slasher. And it was like a, turned out to be like a security guy, but he would terrorize like Scooby-Doo style all the trams and pop out of the Green Department or Mexico Village and be like, wah! And everyone would be like, there he is! Yeah, yeah particularly down at the, the famous stage where the Hunchback of Notre Dame set is. That's always yeah. been a... a haunted stage and they left that there universal for years i think it's still there might have been moved now they need so much space there universal i don't know what show i was on it could have been uh newsies it could have been uh saint almost fire we did there but uh, it was quite a deal when the slasher was running out you know crews were working in the evening and uh they didn't like to walk back there unless they had a friend if they had to go back to the truck and get some more lumber or wood or anything because we, we work a lot in the back lot Right. And there's all these creepy brownstone streets back there. It is creepy. And that's where he was creeping. I talked to my friend, uh, a good friend, my, uh, Frank McEldown. He was Greensman on the show. He reminded me, yeah, we were carrying big hammers on the side there, big claw hammers, because it was kind of worried. Because he was kind of hanging out up where the Greens department is, hiding in the trees and sneak down. And yeah. That's a deal. Well, you know, from our office there on the back lot, you can explore all of that. And there's like so many places for a character like that to thrive and hide. And it's like, and I actually think I'm one of the few people there that they should keep doing it. Like get a guy to do that. The Phantom Slasher. Like that's one of the more like intriguing moments. Like, did you see him? Like, can you imagine all the people on the tram wondering if they saw him or not? Have him pop out and zip back into hiding. You know, it's a real, real haunted, scary place. Uh, Paramount's a very old studio. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, they have some very old sections left. Well, the paint department backs right up to the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. And uh, it's real spooky. You look out the window at the end of the paint department upstairs, and you can see all the graves right there. It's always been haunted, always been a problem. Well, I used to work a lot late on, on second shifts. If we had a lot, because I always build a lot of sets, like Airplane 2 over there and Serial, these big movies, a lot of sets. And all our stages are along that wall. So one night we're working late. We had to take a 1204 call because it was a lacquer call. Can't spray lacquer in those days on those stages until everybody's gone. Anyway, we're working late. I'm there. 
and I, the painters need to go back and get some more paint in the paint shop and know where it'll go. These are big guys, big guys with cigarettes, cigars. No one will go. And I, I said, uh, what do you mean you can't go back there? He said, it's, it's, it's haunted. They'll get me if I go back there at night. I'm like, oh, I'll go back. You, you got to mean you, a big guy like you, you got to take somebody with you. I'm not going back there unless I have two people. So I was curious, right? So I went back there. I never saw anything, but it was funny to me that this lore, they will not go in a couple of those upstairs old buildings unless they've got somebody and they've got to go in there. So No, we deal with that all the <laughs> we deal with that all the time in the Hitchcock building. There's sometimes at night people will not go into it. You know, they won't. Yeah. It's like, I know where, I, uh, where you are right there. There's a lot of history where you are right there. Bill Sandell, you may be the greatest production designer that ever lived buddy. And we love you. That is not true, but I'll take the compliment. Thanks. <laughs> Stay awesome, brother. Okay. Take care. Ethan. Bye-bye. So, <laughs> what a clever little white bitch. But it will not save thy friends. No. Come, sisters. The candle's magic is almost spent. Dawn approaches. <laughs> <laughs>